Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at probably the most expensive gear I have ever reviewed. These are the Hansa Inutech Soleri Cinema Primes. If you're not aware, Cinema Primes are lenses built with um, a single focal length. These lenses are full frame. Um, they're um, they have dual side marking. They of course have uh, a ring for both focus and aperture. And these ones have the markings on both sides in feet. You can also get them in meters. Uh, you can also, yeah, they come in both PL and EF. The ones that I've been lent by Hansa Inotech uh, are swappable. So they have a detachable ring on the base of the lens um, that with a little hex uh, screwdriver you can take off and substitute for an EF mount. So you can go between PL and EF really easily. They're built out of metal. Um, they have a 250 degree focus throw. So on a Canon stills lens, you might have 10 or 20 degrees between the nearest focal distance and infinity. Whereas these lenses have 250 degrees to turn between um, infinity and the closest you can focus. Compare them with something like the Rokinon City Primes, which are largely made largely from plastic, um, which are a lot smaller. Sure, if you shoot with these occasionally, they'll probably serve you for a couple of years. Um, these are constructed so that you can use them every day for decades and they'll still have the same tolerances, they'll still have the same optical quality, they'll still have the same um, reliance. But they're all, except the 18.5, the same weight. So if you were using these on a gimbal or a crane that's balanced or a stabilized head, you can swap between the 25 and the 85 and not have to rebalance your camera, which uh, is I think pretty unique in city lenses. They're a very fast 1.5 uh, across the entire range. These are also full frame lenses. So you can buy them for your C200 or Ava One or Alexa Mini now and in five or 10 years time when the mainstream cinema cameras go full frame, much like the Alexa, high-end Alexas and Canons have now, you'll still be able to use the same um, set of lenses. Unlike a lot of the lenses out there, like the Rokinons, the Zines, um, the CP3s, they're not rehoused stills glass. They are custom made from scratch cinema lenses and you you get the unique sort of feel that that brings. So a lot of people are probably looking at these two lenses. Uh, this one costs $500, this one costs $5,000 and wondering, um, what do I get for my extra $4,500? Uh, what is it that a high-end um, professional cinema prime brings to my filmmaking that I can't um, get in other places? Like, why should I put my resources into cinema lenses um, or beautiful cinema lenses, either buying or renting them, um, rather than you know shooting for another day or another week or getting a better camera, a better monitor, that sort of thing. And that's also a question that I've struggled with um, over my filmmaking. I always, you know, I've gone through different stages of, you know, really loving lenses and thinking that that's the, the one place you can make a real difference or thinking that a lot of what lenses do can be done in post. You can increase the sharpness, you can increase, change the colors um, in something like DaVinci Resolve. So, you know, what exactly, what exact value do they add? Some of it subtle, some of it not so subtle. They definitely change the way that the camera sees color. Each lens or each element of the lens is coated um, with different materials, different chemicals. They shape and change the light as it passes through. It affects things like color. It affects things like dimensionality, uh, meaning how 3D or 2D, how wide or flat um, an image looks. And yes, it is pretty subtle. And some of it is pretty much invisible um, on a compressed YouTube uh, video, but you know you you see it or feel it a lot more um, on the big screen if you're working for uh, for a cinema um, production. Some types of lenses are really consistent amongst all the sets of those lenses. Other lenses, especially vintage lenses, um, have a character all of their own. You see in the um, the Soleri uh, 50 mm it has this sort of swirl in the bokeh. Um, that's quite distinctive, gives it a really interesting look. Lenses flare differently um, when light's shot right through them. Um, they give different colors, different shapes. Uh, it's very, it can be very distinctive or it can be subtle. But when it comes down to it, the real advantage of cinema lenses uh, like these is that they give your film a unified, distinctive look. They will sort of 
bake in a very high-end um, cinematic uh, aesthetic into everything that you shoot for not that much money. Like considering that, you know, a set like these probably rent for five or six hundred dollars a week. Um, so you're shooting a feature over three weeks, that's fifteen hundred dollars. If you were to employ a colorist to go through and add um, that same kind of sharpness, that same kind of subtle color tones, that same kind of flair to all of your footage, you're looking at a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a day for that colorist's time um, in a in a high-end color suite with a balanced monitor and all the tools. So you can see that um, as expensive as these are to own, um, the reason that a lot of people buy them and then or rent them for their productions is that they do add a lot of value very economically um, to the movie or to the film or to the production that you're shooting. I've shot with these for a little while now. Um, I've only had them for about a week, but they do seem to add that extra layer of glow, that extra layer of production um, to whenever I put them on the camera. It's really noticeable um, when you see it uh, full screen on a you know 30 inch monitor. It's much less noticeable when you're looking through, but once you actually go back and review the footage, there's just a certain polish on things that you don't get with say, you know, my go-to Canon 50mm 1.4. Um, they don't have autofocus, of course. Um, they have to be focused manually. Uh, and I think that's why they're probably more um, suitable to a you know, bigger size productions that can afford focus pullers. Um, they're not quite your run and gun set of lenses. Uh, yeah, but you, you know, no one's running and gunning with $20,000 worth of glass. For the money that it costs to rent these, uh, nothing comes close in economically adding uh, a polish to your production um, and a set an extra level to your filmmaking. That's my look at the Hanzo Inatech Soleri uh, set of lenses, uh, the 1.5 primes. You can get them from B&H. Uh, I got the, these ones were courtesy of uh, Max Digital uh, here in uh, California. You can rent them. Well worth uh, taking the time to like learn about what cinematic lenses do and how they can just really take your filmmaking to the next level. Thanks very much for watching guys. Leave your questions in the comments. I will see you next time.